Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is the day I am finally gonna properly introduce you to my fiance. And I wanted to do this for a while, but most of you guys know he's a very private guy. Um, yeah, we don't really talk much about our relationship on YouTube and you don't really see him. He doesn't like appearing on camera. But I had the idea of doing a fiance tag so you guys can get to know him a little bit better and get to know our relationship a little bit better. And I voiced that out to him and he was a bit like, yeah, like, okay, you don't have to be on camera if you're not comfortable, but like they can ask us questions, questions about you or our relationship. So he said we had to get 10,000 likes in order for him to do it and you guys went above and beyond that. When I asked him this morning if he wanted to do it, he was kind of like, oh, I don't know. And I said, what if we don't like sit in this room with a camera in front of us and I interrogate you? I know that that's gonna make him feel even more stressed out. So I was like, what if we just do like a normal vlog? We like go about our day and I ask you some questions here or there, very chill, very relaxed, and he agreed to it like that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I've asked you guys on social media and on YouTube what questions you wanna know and I'm gonna answer some of the top questions or the ones I get frequently asked as well as address a lot of the comments that we constantly see in our videos. So let's just jump right into it. Ready, almost on, come on out! Oh! <laughs> Why a foot? Hi! I thought you would do your elbow. Why are you just showing all body parts? There he is, there he is. All right, so first off, let's start with the beginning. How did we meet? I'll let you answer yeah, your version. Um, each other? Yeah, because we, we didn't actually meet each other in person for a long time, but I guess, like, what was the very beginning? How did you find um, me? I think you told them in the last video. Yeah, but I want to hear your version. I know you because of our common friend. Yeah, a common Gary friend on, on Facebook. On Facebook, yep. And I saw your picture and I want to uh, work with you before mm -hmm. at first. Yeah. And then I message. Uh, how can I find you on Facebook? Because I was tagged. Oh yeah, you're tagged and you have a page and I message to your page. Yeah, I had a public page at the time and, and he messaged me there. if you want to work together, like work something interesting together. I call your agency and then I met your uh, manager. Yeah. And then your manager referred you to me. Yeah. yeah. Then we message directly through Facebook. At the beginning, we were both in a relationship and I had a boyfriend, so I didn't think anything of it. It was pure like, um, at the beginning, we just worked together a little bit. But then we started talking more and more not about work and I found, I found myself getting pretty close to him. Like we became really good friends and I like was constantly talking to you on my phone. <laughs> like I talked to, to you more than anyone. And I had, and then I realized like I was completely falling in love with your like personality and the way you thought and mm -hmm. yeah. Even though I had never met him in real life. That was a long answer, short answer. We met through a mutual friend on Facebook and yeah, it sort of blossomed um, into this friendship and then we started falling for each other. And then our first date, how was our first date? Our first date is uh, in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. It's called Lobo in Jinsanjo. Yeah, it's a Japanese restaurant. We both really liked Japan and Japanese food. That is something we had in common. And uh, yeah, I met him there. I remember taking the train and I was wearing this Liz Lisa princess dress and like my red bow and my contact lenses and full makeup. Yeah. I think that was Taylor 1.0, like the beginning of the Dolly face. Yeah, I remember just sitting on the stairs. Like the, I, I was so nervous to go up and meet you in person because I had this whole thought process that I lived this online personality where I was this perfect doll and I was worried that I would disappoint you in real life. Mm -hmm. And I think I thought that way about people in general. Like I, I felt so scared to go out in public all the time because I, I knew I wasn't really perfect and I'm not like, I don't know. Anyways, it took me a lot. Like I sat down and like really convinced myself to go out and meet you. Yeah, I was very nervous too because yeah. uh, it's the first time I met a Western girl in person. I don't need to talk to Western people. 
and before, seldomly spoke English. Before I met you, so my English was not very fluent. Yeah. Even worse than now. So <laughs> I can only speak like word by word and like uh, slowly. Very slowly. And, and we used a lot of the translation on the phone. Yeah, Google dictionary and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but what did you think? Like when I walked into the restaurant, you were already sitting there. Uh, yeah, I was waiting for you. Because like <laughs> I had a few mental breakdowns, but... For a half an hour. Really? Yeah. I made you... Oh my god, I'm sorry. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> okay. And then once I saw you, I'm in shock because you were exactly like the one on the video. It's like big eyes, curly hair, long hair. <laughs> Dolly face is like unreal. And we ended up talking for like forever and we got into really deep conversations even about like your past and like you basically told me everything about you. I was pretty shocked. You felt super comfortable with me pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And then um oh people asked, did you know you were gonna marry me when you saw me? Or after that first date? Not at that stage. I didn't think about it at that stage so early. Yeah, we knew quite a bit about each other, but at the same time, we were so different from completely different backgrounds. I think we knew that there would be a lot of obstacles we need to overcome and like how well can we actually work together and that mm -hmm. would take time because like as friends, we worked great, but as a relationship, it took some time to develop, I think. We mm -hmm. took things really, really slow. Yeah. We didn't rush. And yeah. Because I don't know how it would be to be with a Western girl in a relationship. So I don't I'm not, I was not sure about that before. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you think it's different than a Chinese girl? Yeah, it's very different. Different? Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah. Mm, I think the cultural difference like a uh, living habit, mindset. I think what I could tell from the beginning is that I don't know if it's necessarily a culture thing or like the way you're raised maybe, but for me, like I had been traveling so many years by myself um, and living on my own and being independent. And then also the way I was raised, like my mom is quite, <laughs> How do I word it? My mom is like, for example, if you have a cold, she'll be like, so go, go to bed or suck it up. Like they, uh, she'll say like, there's nothing a doctor can do. I'm not gonna take you to the doctor. It's just like, go to bed or like suck it up and go about your life. It's very like, take care of yourself. And then here, for example, like um, Chinese moms will cook you soup and you'll go to the doctor and the, the doctor will give you like 50, like, 10 different packs of pills even though when you look them up on the internet they're just like ibuprofen or something like that so it's not really going to cure you it's just going to mask the symptoms but either way people like will be very caring towards you mm -hmm. and then i think at the beginning that's sort of more of like more of that feeling is what you expected from a girlfriend and then i was quite like independent yeah like, western girls typically more independent Somehow they are thinking is more independent as well, like more free spirit. Mm -hmm. So to answer another question about like um, the struggles of the beginning of our relationship and cultural differences, that is what we struggled with the most. So I think the solution to that was to sort of meet halfway and, and like communicate a lot. We're going out for lunch and Rosie's coming and she's very excited. Come here! Are you going out? So in conclusion to that question, yes, I think it did take a bit of time to adjust and it took a lot of communication and talking about the needs of each other and sort of finding a balance in between the two cultures and the upbringing. So what's something, what's your favorite things about me?
Ambitious. Oh, ambitious? That's what I like about you too. You really like to get something done and create something great yourself. Yeah. And always want to achieve something. One of the reasons why I love you is because you're so ambitious and driven. Abosan actually is a self-made man. He came from nothing and worked so damn hard to build himself into what he is today. Um, how much did you start your business with? How much was in your bucket at the beginning? Mm, practically nothing, like 500 Hong Kong maybe. 500 Hong Kong he had in his bank account and he built this, yeah, he built himself from nothing. It's one thing to be ambitious and have a lot of goals, which I do, but my like, one thing I'm not good at all the time is following through. I give up kind of easily and I like change. Um, but he like will work his butt off and like keep going and keep going and he's super persistent and never gives up till it happens. You like to risk things. Like you, you're not scared of losing everything because you started with nothing. You're not scared to go back to that. You'll take a lot of business risk. Um, in order to get further but I'm a little bit scared and I hold back I think because my upbringing was like I had a very um, like financially stable upbringing from my parents and I'm not really willing to take a lot of I'm scared to take risks and I'm scared if something doesn't really work out I'll change immediately instead of put, keeping on pushing not only do you set goals and you're ambitious but you like work hard and you're persistent and consistent and I think it's also your family values the way you like treat and respect my family and like when I see you with my grandparents you really take care of them and you're yeah, just like so kind. My mother's education from my childhood Yeah. because uh, she's very strict. Mm -hmm. Also um, how uh, supportive you are. From the beginning you always encourage me to go for my dreams um, and in the past um, people would sort of think something stupid or like you shouldn't do that but you've always no matter how I dressed no matter what I was doing or what I want to create that day you would be right beside me holding my hand helping me film even when I told you like to turn around and not watch me while I was dancing you were there at like four in the morning with me helping me to film and encouraging me to go for it so um, yeah you just have always supported my dreams since the moment you met me. With that, I, I know a lot of people said like, what do you think about me being a YouTuber? Mm, I think whatever you do, I will support you. Yeah. Not, not just as a YouTuber. Aww. Whatever you want to do, just do it. Because when you first met me, I wasn't really into YouTube. I think I made like two videos speaking Cantonese really horribly <laughs> before I met you and then when Hello, oh hi Taylor. <laughs> oh hi Kala Tayan. I was taking Cantonese lessons at the time and I wanted to like show off my skills which wasn't very good skills at all but actually you got me more into YouTube I think because I think when I met you the way you support and encourage me made me like go for it more I didn't hold back so I think you were like the wings that lifted me. <laughs> as cheesy as it sounds, but I think when you find someone that really supports your dreams, um, you feel like you could do anything and you're, you're sort of unstoppable and you really did that for me. A lot of people want to know what do you do for a living? Oh, for my living? Yeah, what's your job? I own my company doing some like digital media stuff. Digital media stuff. Yeah. Um, how many years has it been since you started your first one? Well, like uh, over 10 years. Over 10 years. Uh, so I think what you could say is he's on online media but he's also like an entrepreneur because as soon as you have one company that sort of takes off you always start another one you always move on to the next thing so he's always looking for the next like business ideas and most of them are online so he just starts them up like that I still don't know how we can move in in two weeks <sighs>
No you think no? What about our age difference? It doesn't bother me. What's your age? 41. 41? I'm 29, so we have 12 years difference between us. And uh, yeah, what do you think? Do you notice it? Is it? Does it affect anything? Not really. No? Yeah. You're quite mature. I'm, yeah, yeah, I think I'm very like, because I traveled by myself for so long, I grew up really fast for modeling and like was by myself in different countries. So I learned how to like take care of myself. And I'm, I think, I think what it comes down to for me too isn't age necessarily because like my past boyfriends, one was the same age and one was I think five years older, but it's, it has nothing to do with the age. And I think this has to do with like gender and you know, um, culture, age, all these things don't really matter that much. It's more the person and their personality and their compatibility. Compatibility. I feel like if you're on the same page morally, like with your morals and with your values and like in general, you can have a good relationship. And I think around like your mid twenties, you kind of know who you are and what you want. Before that you change quite a bit and a lot about you changes. So maybe when you're in a relationship, you will grow in different directions. But when you're around your mid twenties, I don't see much of like an age gap when you're dating someone older because you, you, you kind of know yourself and you know what you want, I think. And somehow I'm childish. <laughs> yeah, I think you're a little bit childish and I'm a, like, we, we sort of meet in the middle. Sometimes I feel older than you. Yeah. Don't really like going out a lot. I like staying home and I like someone very settled, not into like partying all the time. Um, knows what he wants in life and it sort of worked out that way. But I think he goes out more than I do. You're more social. I like, I could just stay home all the time. Of course, I don't mean everything being the same too. I think you need to have different interests and that makes, that keeps things exciting in the relationship. But um, yeah, I think if you're just at a point in your life where you're sort of on the same page, it, it makes things a lot easier and it makes the relationship work better. How do you feel about being called sugar daddy? Sugar <laughs> daddy? Uh, when people say I'm with you for your money, it doesn't bother me <laughs> because, I, because I know it's not the case. Yeah. So just let them talk. Doesn't yeah. Matter. Because you earn your own money. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> whatever I buy it is from my own money. So he's not my sugar daddy. I support myself. But at the same time and then if people say like i'm with you for your money um I, it has nothing to do with that like of course um like having the security for myself and my family is a bonus but all of your other qualities i rate a lot higher it's not really the idea that he's rich that attracts me or something like that it's more your the personality you have that gets you to be rich like your ambition and your hard work all those characteristics about you I love. So whether you're successful or not, it's the fact that you, you're really driven and you, you want that is what's, what attracts me. I think that type of personality because my dad's like that, my grandfather's like that on both sides. They're both like driven businessmen. And I think that's more of what I go for. I think no matter what you do, you will be successful because you're like, like you don't stop until it works. Yeah, mindset is more important. It's your mindset that I'm attracted to. And I think a person with that sort of mindset eventually will become successful. I don't know how long it takes, but like you said, you've been at your business for 10 years, so eventually you'll be successful. So you should tell all the girlfriends, don't judge your boyfriend right now. You may be successful 10 years later. Yeah. Just wait. Just wait. Just support him, support his dreams. Oh. Actually, I saw one from Michaela. Ooh, I have a juicy question. Would you consider each other an S or an M? What's that? I don't know. <laughs> Small or medium? S and M? S M? <laughs> like sexual? I'm messaging her now. We'll find that out later. Okay, what's your 
What was that question? What's your golden rules for maintaining a healthy relationship? I think respect. Respect each other and leave it behind. Respect each other, but also respect for the families, I think. Yeah. Um, each other's family helps a lot. We're both big family people, so they definitely have to get along with each other's family. Um, I also think it's more than respect, though, it's communication. Because, uh, in, like, in a relationship, if something's bothering you, you need to tell the person right away, instead of keeping it inside and bottling up and then later exploiting when they keep doing it, because maybe they don't even realize they're doing it. And I didn't realize I was doing some things, but now I know exactly, like, what ticks him off or what bothers him, and he knows the same for me. So I communicating that, like, when you're happy or, like, when you like something or when you don't like something, just, like, constant communication is really key. I think also support, we touched on support, but supporting each other's goals and dreams and, like, lifting each other up all the time instead of putting each other down. You get enough crap from people in the outside world, whether it be online or offline, and just, yeah, so I think having a very positive, uplifting space towards each other is really important. That's another thing. People asked if we fight a lot. Do we fight a lot? I can't even remember the last time we fought. In the beginning, we had a few little, yeah, communication issues, cultural differences and personality differences that we needed to sort out. But um, once that was done, like, we never fight. It's very rare that we do. When we fight, it's explosive and passionate. But it's very rare. And, and at this point, I think we've gotten used to each other and we never, like, I can't remember the last time. We never fight. And make sure you kiss people back then. <laughs> Every night. Every night. Say I love you and kiss and don't go to bed angry at each other. My grandma always says that too. A lot of people say that. Don't go to bed angry. You try your best too anyways. I know sometimes it's hard. A lot of people ask this question. Um, how did you know I was the one? things and then on the bigger decisions you will step in because there's a lot you don't care about like daily things like what we eat today where should we go today um, and then there's some things that I make a lot of decisions on like our house being renovated I'm doing that but on a lot of bigger things you make the decisions so I think it's kind of both depending on what it is relationship wise though like who is a more aggressive one or made more of the moves you <laughs> Yeah, you always made the first moves. The first move to contact me, the first move to ask me on a date. First one to kiss me. Yeah, you're super, you're you're quite shy, but you're not. I don't know how to explain it. When there's something you want, you go for it. I hope that answers your question, Michaela, without getting to. I'm not sure my grandparents want to know who's the dominant one in bed, but he is a Scorpio, I'll just say that. Ooh, I thought of one more big thing for a long-lasting relationship. I think something that's really important is to take interest in each other's interests because we have very different ones. For example, he's very into music and like classical music. I'm really not. I wasn't raised to really... None of us can play instruments. I'm not very musically inclined. I'm pretty tone deaf. Um, if you can't tell from my dancing, I'm not on beat. So... Uh, yeah, he got me, now I really appreciate like classical music and orchestras and performances like that. And so 
I think going together and doing things together you wouldn't normally do that interest that person really helps grow that bond and it helps grow you as a person too because then I realized that I'm actually interested in those things too and maybe I just didn't really understand them before. Okay, we're back home now and I think one of the questions was what do we like to do together on our time off? So when we're not working, you just saw today what our weekend routine basically is. We will wake up, we will either go to the gym together and then we'll sometimes go to brunch, but we always take Rosie out, so we choose a brunch place that allows dogs where we can sit outside. And then we'll usually take her to the park, get some good coffee, because we're both really into coffee. And then um, sometimes we'll do a movie or like go shop around. And then we usually come home, and later in the afternoon, is his idea of chilling is playing PlayStation, so he'll probably do that right now. And mine is usually like watching YouTube videos or editing. So that's what I'm gonna get to. And then tonight, every Sunday night, we order a hot pot and we just Netflix and eat. <laughs> so we're gonna do that later too. There's a whole bunch of ingredients basically that you cook inside soup broth. This is crazy spicy. It's numbing, spicy like Sichuan soup. And this is soy milk. And then we're watching Making a Murder, which we're on episode seven. There's only three left, so I think we're gonna finish it tonight. So while that's heating up, I'm gonna ask the last question. What is your ideal wedding? Simple. Simple. Mm. Simple and just with a group of close friends and relatives. Uh-huh. Yeah. Simple and small? Yeah. I hope that that satisfied your curiosity and the mysterious elbow san isn't so mysterious anymore. Um, and you've had a glimpse into our relationship. Oh. I have Instagram. <laughs> you knew what I was going to say. He just started Instagram and he wants to make a page that he could post and like post some things about him so you could get to know him a little bit more. So I will link it down below. If you want to follow him, you can go there. If you want to like talk to him there or I don't know, see what he posts. I don't know what he's gonna post. And I know he didn't appear in this video while I was interrogating him, but uh, yeah, he doesn't feel comfortable appearing all the time. If you wanna see him, he's in my engagement video. I will link him below. And I will see you in the next video. It's